Today we're gonna be unboxing the Air Jordan 13 Playoff. Starting with the box right here, you have your all silver OG style Air Jordan 13 box. You got the red Jumpman right here on the lid. And on the size tag, it reads Air Jordan 13 Retro, black, true red, white, Retails 210 bucks, and these are a size 13 just for me. Flipping open the lid of the box right here, you got your standard white paper, and then you got the shoe. Oh, you got the shoe. Okay, first impression of the sneaker. It does look a little bit slimmer than the OG version, but at the same time, I still love them. Oh yeah, and by the way, if you didn't know by now, my name is DJ, and this is the DNA Show. Hey! Now, before we get started breaking down all the styles, cuts, and materials of this shoe, we gotta talk about the history first. Originally released in 1997, the Air Jordan 13 came on the scene and everybody had their eyes on it simply because they knew it was gonna be Michael Jordan's last season as a Chicago Bull. Throughout the season, we saw iconic colorways like the Cherries or the He Got Games. And as the All-Star game rolled around, Michael Jordan debuted the Playoff 13s. He had done the same thing the previous year with the Playoff 12s, which we saw the 25th anniversary release last year during the All-Star weekend and we're seeing that same treatment here this year with the 25th anniversary for this year's All-Star Weekend. After the All-Star game was over, he didn't wear the playoff 13s until the actual playoffs, and he was most commonly known wearing this colorway in particular during the home games. So yes, some people may remember seeing him wearing the bread colorway as well, which looked amazing with the all-red uniform. He also wore a low-top playoff 13 as well. And I actually saw an article talking about how that pair in particular is estimated to be worth around $500,000. Wait a minute! it. And yes, I know that crazy price point could easily distract a lot of people from thinking about this pair, but there was another shoe that actually took a little bit more shine than the Playoff 13s, and that was the Last Shot 14s. He wore those at the end of the season as well, and the reason why they call them the Last Shots is he took his last shot in those shoes. So even though Jordan was wearing the 13s throughout the entire season, the 14 definitely did come into play and take some of that shine. But that's okay though, because all the OG heads know about the playoffs. And if you guys are new to the game, trust me, I'm excited to show you guys the details of this shoe. So let's go ahead and get started with the bottom of the shoe. Looking at the bottom of the shoe right here, you have your classic Air Jordan 13 outsole. One thing that a lot of people love is they did the gray lines right here in between the white hair and bone pods. On the front, in the back end, on the retro in 2011, it was all red through here and then on the OG it was similar to this style so one thing that I can say is they did a good job trying to bring back that OG vibe even when it comes to the actual color pattern of the OG outsole now if you look on these two images right here you can see the difference between the little hologram on the bottom and the color on that but besides that everything is pretty much similar now taking it up to the midsole right here this is something that was heavily inspired by Jordan's nickname which was the black cat also known as the Black Panther. So they use the inspiration of a Black Panther with the design aesthetic of this shoe. So if you look at the midsole right here and you see kind of how the paw print places, it kind of looks like a paw print on the shoe where these pods are at. And if you go to the top of the shoe right here where the hologram is at, you got your Jordan 23 logo with the Jumpman in there, but that also resembles the eye of the Panther. So when you take those design inspirations behind the sneaker, that gives you a better idea on why this shoe even looks this way. Another dope thing that I love about Jordan 13s is they have the rubber pods on here but you also got your suede that goes on the midsole and it wraps up all around the upper on the back end as well this is definitely something that we've seen integrated in other retros when it comes to something like the cos fours or the levi fours or something like that how they add the different materials to the midsoles but when i think of adding like a different fabric onto a midsole i always think of the jordan 13 first now looking at the leather on the toe of the shoe right here you have a tumbled leather on the toe box and on the side panels right here and they feel pretty solid it doesn't feel the best it doesn't feel the worst i've definitely felt a lot stiffer leather on other Jordan 13s in the past so I feel like they did a solid job on these now when it comes to the side right here some people say this is supposed to resemble the whiskers but for me personally I always said it looks like a mattress what I know it's super random but as a little kid growing up back in the 90s I remember this shoe and having these in the OG pair back when I was a little kid so for me I just always called it that and it still kind of stuck with me to this day now looking at the tongue right here you have your Jordan branding in yellow and then behind that Depends on the retro. Sometimes they do it, sometimes they don't. But normally you have a Roman numerals Jordan 13. It, well, not Jordan 13, but it just has 13 in Roman numerals behind it. But on these ones in particular, it doesn't have that. And then going up to the laces, you got your standard black rope laces. You got your black suede tongue. And then on this one, this is something that I love as well. You got your red Jordan logo right here with the yellow circle around it. Something that really sticks out on the 13s compared to like the Jordan 8s. We know right there is something you're gonna have like more of a chenille patch in between with the different materials so it is kind of similar but different at the same time and gives it its own unique vibe when it comes to the Jordan 13s. Now going to the back of the ton and the inside of the sock liner, you got all black mesh right here and then an all black 
insole with the red jump man on the inside now these in particular don't come with any extra laces hang tags or retro cards but i think that's fine just because it's a great og and i still can't be mad at it would i prefer a retro card yeah because i think they should bring the retro card back but again that's a whole nother topic so now when it comes to market value and other people's opinions about the shoe i'm always interested to see how that goes because sometimes og colorways and og models just fly underneath the radar we know that the jordan 4 is hot right now and we know that the jordan 1 is still pretty hot so because of that some people may not be really wanting to go after these and a lot of people that do want to get these shouldn't have that hard of a time getting the shoe so at the same time yeah we might see a resale value you know 20 to 50 dollars over the retail but i think a lot of people will have a pretty easy time getting the shoe and you might potentially even see these on shelves after they come out again I'm not sure, depending on the city, I know everybody's location is a little bit different. You know, some people have more traffic than others and some stores get less than others. I get that stuff as well. But I wouldn't be surprised if I saw some photos on the internet talking about how the Playoff 13s didn't sell out. Now in the future, you know, three years, five years from now, I don't see any reason why this shoe wouldn't be a $350 to a $450 shoe. I think that's just naturally what happens when it comes to the OG models and the OG colorways. And we talk about that all the time here on the channel. But besides all that with the resale value and everything like that, I think this is a great shoe and something dope to have for the collection. But I'm always interested to see what you guys think. So if you haven't already, make sure you follow me on IG so you can participate in the polls and see all the results here on the channel. I basically ask the people a simple question. Is this shoe fire or is this shoe trash? This is what they said. 80% of the people chose fire and 20% of the people chose trash. And it makes complete sense. I get it. No, not everybody's going to love the Jordan 13. Some people stop at the 11. Some people stop at the 12s. Some people say Jordan 1 through 14 are good and anything higher is worse. All the different things. I've heard every different angle of why people like certain shoes. If he didn't wear it, I don't want it. Those different scenarios. I get all the different things. So I understand why this isn't a unanimous like 95% or something like that. It's not like some crazy hype collab but i think any og head og collector or just person that loves a clean black shoe alone not even just like the story behind it but this is a clean black shoe i think you can go really far with this in your collection and that brings me to the next point i wanted to give you guys a review of my 2011 pair but see what happened was <laughs> I tore mine up and I ended up getting rid of them years ago because I used to wear those way too much. And yeah, I was always hoping that they were retro. I knew there was to be someday they were retro the shoe. So when the retro finally came back around, you know I had to jump on these and I'm excited to give you guys this review. If you guys have any other questions, comments, or concerns, let me know down below in the comment section. I'll see you guys in another one. Yo, before you go, I just launched my Sneakerhead Academy where we got everything on the inside. I teach you all the stuff that I learned over the past 15 years when it comes to sneakers, scaling, real estate, you name it. We talk about all of it in there. And there's an eight-week program plus a bunch of monthly giveaways. I give away shoes literally way too much, honestly. But either way, I'll see you guys on the inside. Hit the link down below in my description or pinned in the comment section for DJ Sneakerhead Academy. And I'll see you guys over there.